Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is the, the CHIDE program or application that we'll be using to program in C. CH is a software um, package that is available from Soft Integration, www.softintegration.com. They have um, taken essentially all the um, good and advanced parts of different software programming languages and packages, brought them together into a single package which allows you to um, use it and to implement code. So it's got um, the advantages of MATLAB, of Fortran, of C, of um, C++, even though it's a C language package, it allows you to look at using some of those um, other software languages as well um, to do certain tasks like plotting graphs and um, making things sort of work, um, in, especially for engineering and scientific applications. <coughs> okay, so um, softintegration.com, if you go to this website, you will be able to download a, a evaluation um, version of this of the software. You will have to register just to be able to gain access to it. Once you download it, you've got 30 days to be able to use a software before a license is required. So my advice is always is um, do the installation of that of that um, evaluation version when you know you're going to have in the next 30 days time to actually um, use it. So what often happens is, and what I've also experienced in the past, is you download the software package, but in the next couple of weeks get so busy with other things that you've got to do, and then um, when you actually need to use the software, your evaluation period has almost been um, used up. So plan a bit ahead in terms of when you want to do that installation so that 30 days can be used. What we're going to be discussing over here is going to be a very basic overview. It's going to be the basic commands we're going to be looking at and um, it's also looking at how to solve problems with these basic commands. Um, yes, I do understand that there are more advanced libraries and um, and uh, code or commands that can be used to do certain tasks. Um, what I have found is that those commands or, or those libraries often being used, especially on limited resources like on microcontrollers, are not always possible. And so um, it's due to the fact that there's limited memory or there's an uh, issue in terms of the amount of, um, of, of, um, of those commands that can be um, executed. And so um, it's sometimes best to implement it using basic code um, so that you're able to actually control what is what's happening over there. <clears throat> well, when it comes to programming, practice makes perfect. This is very essential. Um, you can see a piece of code, you can understand how it happens and how things are flowing, um, but you need to be able to implement it yourself. Whether you write it out yourself on a piece of paper, whether you type it out even if, if it's in a word processor package, um, and then executing it actually on a software like CH, you need to practice. Um, it's only once you practice, you'll be able to see the mistakes you make. And most of the mistakes are either syntax errors. So syntax errors are errors that are um, like typos, like grammatical errors that you would have in English. Um, so you could have that, or it could be logical errors in terms of the code is executing, it's running, but it's not giving you the answer you want to. And sometimes you've got to go step by step through the code to understand why that is happening. But you'll only understand why these errors are happening as you practice. And a lot of these errors, um, trust me, I've spent months sometimes trying to figure out why a piece of code is not working. In the meantime, it's something as silly as a semicolon or as a, um, maybe a comma that was used um, instead. Um, and the code is just not running as needed. So 
keep on practicing that and that will help you to be able to identify common mistakes it's only once you make those mistakes then you, you sort of remember it and um, you'll see in this series of videos as well we will be making mistakes um, um, firstly I'm not a perfect person so there will be mistakes made sometimes I will make mistakes intentionally um, to show you that these these errors do come up um, and hopefully it will sort of stick in your mind and you'll be able to realize you shouldn't make the same mistakes or if you do get a very similar error you will um, be able to know how to solve it and then lastly when it comes to programming you need to solve what's in your mind one um, or put it onto paper um, and a lot of the time with a lot of problems that we've got to solve if you're able to solve it on paper um, or at least in your mind and you're able to see what steps you're able to follow um, again on a basic level once you've got to implement this in code it becomes easier so what we're going to be just looking at very briefly is um, the basic layout of, of a program um, which will be implemented for all types of programs um, that will be coming across in the future okay so firstly what I would suggest you always do is, is go to file go to save as when it comes to save as you have to enter in a, um, a, commo uh, a file name and always have it as a .ch file so in this specific case I've called it lecture1.ch um, if you had to, to say and that's why what you'll see at the top is lecture1.ch um, you need to save the file as a ch um, file and um, because as you do that you will see that certain commands that you type in will be color coded so for example hash include would be in a brownish color um, if I use a command like printf it would turn to a purple color. If you haven't saved this in, into a ch um, file format it won't make these color coded um, text. Okay so um, that's the first thing to be aware of all codes save it and save your, your, your code continuously because um, you will find that often you do like a little bit of an error in your code um, and it causes that uh, the um, operating system whether it's Windows or, or other operating system might start um, realizing that this application is starting to consume a lot of memory and will shut it down and if it shuts it down you're going to lose your, your, your code that you've been working on so you need to save that quite regularly okay so this is our CH screen um, or CH IDE you'll be able to type in your code over here um, and then at the bottom you'll be able to see this, the output of the um, of, of the screen so all code will start off with the um, libraries that are being declared so over here we're going to be looking at hash include it's a triangular bracket stdio.h close it with a triangular black bracket and hash include stdlib H. Okay, so this is your standard input and output um, library. That's going to do with input from the keyboard. Um, the user's got to enter a number and will allow that input to happen. Hash include standard lib, that's the standard library. Um, that's common commands you'll probably come across and that will be used. And these are um, critical to, to declare in the beginning. So these de declarations of these libraries, um, and there are many more that we'll be looking at later on, they're quite crucial to do it. The reason for them is that if you give a command to the computer or to CH, um, like for example, in having a person to enter a, a number or to output to the screen a statement, if you add that, that command or function um, in your code, then a computer will go and so first check these libraries and see what it needs to do when those commands are being requested. So all your libraries get declared over there. Okay, then um, some common um, thing to do is um, comments. 
that's done with these double uh, slashes, uh, forward slashes that, that we use. So um, they are quite useful to have comments. And whenever there's a comment, it doesn't get executed. So um, you could maybe have something like, for example, your name, um, what the program is about, um, etc. So all this information you can put in. As you, as you go to the next line, if you want, if you start typing over there, you'll see there'll be some text over there. If you make an error or so, you want to comment it out. It's just a double forward slash that you use over there. You can also go and um, and so that should be name like that. You can also go and, for example, have star slash and that would have that comment out over there and then end it off with uh, forward slash star over there. So I meant it to be a slash star beginning over there and ending it off with uh, star forward slash over there. So now you see if I type over there anything else, it's again back in black text. Okay, so um, that's how to make comments. It's quite useful and you'll see we use that quite often. Right, then you start with your um, global variables, which will often be over here. So I'm just going to make it as a, as a comment over here. Um, that's where you would have your global variables. You then have int main void and open brackets and close brackets. So let's just have a look at what this means. So main is, is your main program for this specific program that we're looking at. Um, you'll see very similar type of procedures and functions that we'll be looking at um, later on. The void over here means that we aren't in, entering any variables or information to this main function. <coughs> so um, later on we will see having to enter in variables over here. We just leave it as void over there. Int over here is the integer. So in our code we will actually have a return zero command at the end of our code. And that would, so when this code gets executed, it gets to this return zero um, line and it will then go and return a zero to that integer over there. So when a computer executes it, it would say the command, the program has been executed successfully and a zero would be returned. As a matter of fact, if you look at this piece of code that I, wrote, uh, that I ran just before entering this, it said exit code zero. That mean that zero means is that return zero so there were no errors okay so you're always going to have an int main void open with a curly bracket and end with a curly bracket for this section over here you'll see that the software does do this indentation which is quite useful and it help you'll see we'll do it quite a lot so that you can try and um, structure your code in such a way it makes it easier to follow Okay, so looking at, at um, this, we're also going to have int x, which is equal to 0, for example. So this over here will be your local variables. So we'll declare our local variables over there, and we'll be looking at declaring more. And then obviously you have your piece of code below that. Um, so as we've declared x to be equal to 0 and indicate that it's an integer over here for our local variables, you can have very similar for global variables. Global variables is only used if um, needed, um, if a variable is needed between functions and procedures and not within that specific um, uh, functional procedure that we're using. So generally it will be a local variable that we'll be using um, unless we can get later on into um, different type of software and um, graphs and things that have to be plotted with different functions that we use. Okay, so um, just to maybe give you a quick um, indication of what is going to happen. So let's have a basic um, command over here of printf 
So print f is the output um, command to print to the screen. So print function, you open brackets with the apostrophe, and whatever you put in between your double colon apostrophes, that will be um, outputted to the screen. So print f hello world, and that will, if we go and click on run over here, you'll see over here it exits it to hello world. Now you'll see this exit code zero being shown over there. And that's a return zero, as I mentioned before. What you will notice is that it doesn't look that neat, so we might want to create a new line. If we go uh, backslash in over there, for example, and we run it, hello world, and then on a new line, this exit code will be shown. So this forward slash in is just to represent a new line. And this, when, so whenever the, the um, code sees a forward slash n in a printf statement, it knows to generate a new line. So we can have a few of them next to each other. In this case, we've got three of them, and that would give us a bit of a space between the exit code and the hello world statement. So this can be very useful um, to space things out. Um, also, if you've got to have different type of information in between, or different information on different lines, then you would use this um, forward slash n um, statement in your point f command. Okay, so this is the basic um, structure of a, of a program that we will be looking at, um, and we will be then using this for our programs in the future.